Okay, in this video, we are gonna cover cholesterol medications or anti-lipemic medications, if you're feeling fancy. The first class, we're gonna talk about our statins. So statin medications are used for hypercholesteremia. They are also used for prevention of coronary heart disease in patients who are at high risk. So statins, their mode of action is to decrease LDLs, which are the bad cholesterol, so L for lousy. They also increase production of HDLs, which is the good cholesterol, so H for happy. Side effects for statins are gonna be very important for you to remember. So that includes hepatotoxicity, muscle pain, rhabdomyolysis, as well as GI upset. In terms of administration, you're gonna advise your patient to take this medication with their evening meal because cholesterol is synthesized at night. So the tip I got from one of our crew members is that statin kind of looks like satin. So you take your statin right before you crawl into your satin sheets at night. And it just helps you to remember when this type of medication is administered. Also, during therapy, you're gonna to want to closely monitor your patient's liver function because of that risk of hepatotoxicity. You're also going to want to monitor their creatine kinase levels because of the risk of rhabdomyolysis. And then lastly, you want to advise your patient to avoid alcohol and avoid grapefruit juice while taking their statin. All right, next, let's talk about a cholesterol absorption inhibitor, which is azetamibe. Azetamibe works to prevent hypercholesteremia by inhibiting the absorption of cholesterol in the small intestine. So my tip for you is that azetamibe will help cholesterol zip through the small intestine and not get absorbed. Key side effects with this medication include hepatotoxicity as well as muscle pain. So again, this was like the same side effects we had with the statins, and you'll see that it's gonna be kind of consistent across these cholesterol medications. So while the patient, while the patient is taking azetamibe, you want to closely monitor their liver function as well as their CK levels. All right, now let's talk about our bile acid sequestrants, which include medications such as colocevalam and cholestyramine, which I hope I'm not butchering that name too much. These medications are used for hypercholesteremia. They work by binding to bile acids in the intestine, which helps increase excretion of cholesterol and bring down LDL levels. The key side effect with both of these medications is constipation, as well as GI upset. So some of my silly ways to try to remember these two medications is if you eat a lot of lamb, which is high in fat and cholesterol, you may need colocevalam to bring down your cholesterol levels. Also, because these medications both you know, start with the words coal, um, I think about coleslaw, which is high in fiber, which you can eat to counteract the constipating effects of these medications. So in terms of administration, you definitely want to advise your patient to increase their fiber and fluid intake to help prevent that constipation. They should take this medication with food and a full glass of water. In addition, these medications can interfere with fat-soluble vitamin um, absorption. So this includes vitamins A, D, E, and K. The way I remember which vitamins are fat soluble is I think about a fat deck of cards. And so that helps me remember A, D, E, and K. All right, we're going to cover our next class of antilipemic medications, which are fibric acid derivatives. This class includes medications such as gemfibrozole and phenofibrate. So you can see both of these medications have that FIB, F-I-B, which is how I remember that they are used for cholesterol because I think if you ate more foods that were high in fiber, so F-I-B, then you wouldn't need a medication such as gemfibrozole or phenofibrate to lower your cholesterol. So it's a little bit of a stretch, but that's how I remember. 
So these medications are used for hypercholesteremia. They work by decreasing triglyceride production and transport. They also help increase levels of HDL. So that's our good cholesterol, our happy cholesterol. Side effects can include GI upset, gallstones, hepatotoxicity, and muscle pain. So here we, are, here we are again with hepatotoxicity and muscle pain. These are going to be very common side effects with cholesterol medications. So in terms of teaching, you want to advise your patient to take this medication 30 minutes before breakfast and dinner, and we're also going to want to monitor their liver function during therapy because of the risk of hepatotoxicity. Okay, the last medication we're gonna cover here in this video is niacin. Niacin is a water-soluble vitamin, it's B3, and in large doses, it can be used to treat hypercholesteremia by decreasing lipoprotein and triglyceride synthesis. The key side effect with niacin is flushing of the face. So the way I remember this is that my face doesn't look very nice when I take niacin because of that flushing. Other side effects include GI upset, pruritus, which is like itchy, itchiness, as well as hepatotoxicity and possible hyperglycemia. So when your patient is taking niacin for hypercholesteremia, you're gonna to want to monitor their liver function because of that hepatotoxicity, and you're also going to want to use this medication cautiously in patients with diabetes because of the side effect of hyperglycemia. Okay, in my next video, I will be covering vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes, which are used to correct imbalances in the bloodstream. So hang in there with me. We are almost through all these cardiovascular medications.